Hey there, friends. Ash here. Welcome back to Gen Sense. Hope you're doing well. Today, we're going to be talking about classy fragrances. Fragrances that uh, smell modern, easy to wear, the sense of success. None of these fragrances smell dated whatsoever. We've got some niche ones. We've got some designer ones. Going to run the whole gamut. I'll have all of them linked in the description down below. Feel free to check them out down there. And uh, here are some codes, as always, that you can use to save yourself some money. Also, a quick shameless plug. I have another channel, Extra Gents Scents. So if you want even more fragrance content, check that out. Just Extra Gents Scents. Type it in on a little search bar. It'll pull it right up. I do more reviews on that channel of fragrances that I don't cover here, have some other assorted lists and stuff. So if you want to watch more fragrance content, there you go. All right, let's get it kicked off. Which fragrance will we start with? Start with this one. Ralph's Club Elixir by Ralph Lauren. I really, really, really love this one. I think it may be the best of the entire Ralph's Club line. Has iris in there, which is a note that of course I'm very partial to. You also have in this fragrance, lavender, cardamom, citrus, uh, leather, and olibanum. Has a really nice sweetness off the top that doesn't come across sugary, just very pleasant and classy. The iris is on the fresher side of things. It has a touch a touch of that makeup y scent profile that Iris can sometimes have, but not as much as something like a Valentino Bomo Intense or Dior Homme or Dior Homme Intense. It's elegant, it's grown up, but it doesn't smell like an uh, old style fragrance. So even though it has a nice touch of maturity to it, it still smells very modern. And really with the sweetness that it has, I think just about anybody can pull that off. Younger guys, middle-aged guys, older guys, doesn't really matter. It's a fragrance that would be perfect in formal situations, but you can wear it in casual situations as well. And of course the presentation is pretty slick looking too. So we're starting it off with an elixir, but not one of the really big elixirs. After that, this is not in the official top 10 West Loop, which is, of course, my fragrance. It's one of the two new ones that I launched with Michael Malul, this one in Edgewater. And then South Slope also is, is technically new, but it's just Blue Ridge with a different name, same fragrance, same presentation, just named South Slope. But if you've been looking for that one, it's back, just a different name. This one has toasted cinnamon, vanilla orchid, tobacco leaf, among other notes. Has a really nice sweetness to it, extremely appealing, a massive compliment puller. I think you could wear this one year round. Summertime is probably the time that is least suited for this one, just because it does have a, a decent push and it has that sweetness to it. But this is great. I am very biased though. From there, let's do a niche one. Tiziana Terenzi's Orion. Orion, this one you can get for a pretty good price from discounters. I think 115, 120. Sometimes these are on sale for even less than that. Tiziana Terenzi, you can occasionally pick up at discounters for right around a hundred bucks. Now, Terenzi fragrances, some of them are well known for being a little similar to some other popular niche fragrances out there. This one is no different. It has a similarity to a fragrance you may have heard of before called Creed Aventus. It's, it's kind of underground. You maybe, maybe haven't heard about it before, but it's going to be big. Trust me. It might even get to the point that you actually hate uh, hearing about it all the time. That's, that's a possibility. I think that is possible. And really with this one, even if you didn't know ahead of time that it was a little similar to Aventus, you could look at the note breakdown and probably deduce that pretty quickly. I'll hit you with some of the notes here, okay? Birch, pineapple, incense, cedar, oud, jasmine, apple, bergamot, and current, but not black current, red current. Mm totally different. So yeah, it's a little in that style, which also means that you could find it similar to some other things out there, like Nishane's Hasabot, for example, or even Explorer by Mont Blanc, or Morning Chess by Wilhelm Perfumery, or Royal Vintage by M. Mikulov. Like, oh wait, the, yeah, Aventus again. Yeah, those all smell kind of like Aventus. But with this one, it does smell very good. The performance is nice. The fruity pop off the top, extremely appealing. It's got a nice woodiness that you pick up pretty much right away. And yes, you pick up some of that smokiness because there's incense in here, there's oud, there's birch, but it's not something that becomes a detractor to the fragrance. So the blend here is quite well done. It's very classy and it's extremely versatile. It doesn't get talked about a huge amount as being a really high quality alternative to Aventus, but it absolutely is because at the end of the day, you have a niche fragrance here that smells of very high quality, that is an extrait de parfum, 
that you can sometimes pick up for right around a hundred bucks. So overall, it's a great buy. And if you like heavy caps, this one is one of the heaviest. Should be magnetic though. We spent a lot of time talking about that one. Let's talk about this one next. It is Dior Ohm 2020. This is, this is, this is forward. I'm like, <laughs> Dior Ohm 2020. Yes, very fresh, modern. Quite woody, a bit spicy as well. I feel like one of the uh, more versatile fragrances on the market nowadays. This one is that type of scent that can do it all. It's not going to be all that sweet, you know, compared to most of the things out there. This one is, as I said, more on the fresh, spicy, woody side, and it stays that way the whole way through. But I actually very much appreciate that. Uh, not that I'm against a lot of the sweet fragrances that have been coming out because they do the job very well. The performance for most fragrances coming out is very nice. Compliment factor is there, but it's good to have something that is not the exact same as everything else, or at least in a different style, I should say. And that's what this is, and it accomplishes it beautifully. Am I still salty that they changed Dior Ohm and removed the iris and everything? Not really anymore, I guess. At one point in time I was, but now, I accept my woody overlord with arms wide open. That sounds strange. That could be interpreted a lot of weird ways. I've got another one that's a little similar to this one, so I'm gonna just bust that one out right now, and it's uh, Burberry Hero, the Eau de Toilette. Now, it's not similar in the sense that it smells the same as Dior Homme 2020. It is similar in the sense that this is a woody fragrance first and foremost, and it is not trying to be super duper sweet. There is Hero Eau de Parfum, which is going to be sweeter than this one and has more of a resinous undertone. So if you want something like that, it's available. This one is mainly cedar, a good amount of cedar, juniper, and then bergamot off the top. A Little bit of citrus there, it's not too much. Very fresh and lively when you first spray it on. The juniper gives you a nice aromatic tinge as it dries down, but really it's gonna be about that cedar. And this has three different types of cedar used in it. So it has Himalayan cedar, Virginian cedar, and Atlas cedar. And that really lets you know where the focal point is with the fragrance. All you have to do is look at the note breakdown and you know right away, oh, they're really honing in on that, huh? Very much like Dior Ohm 2020 though. This is made to be used pretty much year round, daytime or nighttime in about any situation. And this I do find to be a little smoother than Dior Ohm 2020, just in the way that it hits your nose. Dior Ohm 2020 is a little bit bolder with the way that the woodiness is presented. In Hero, it's, like I said, a little bit smoother, a little bit toned down, made a little bit more accessible, you could say. So for some people, that's going to make Dior Ohm 2020 smell much more interesting to them than Hero. And for other people, they'll say, no, Hero is way better because this one is just easier to use. Even their colorations are a little bit similar. From there, we move on to Y Le Parfum from Yves Saint Laurent. They did just come out with a new Y Elixir. It's quite pricey, $180 for a 60 milliliter size bottle. Not that this one is cheap because it is also quite pricey at full retail. This one at full retail is $190, but that's for a 100 mil size bottle, not a 60 mil size. And you can actually find this at discounters for about $100 for this size bottle, 100 mils. So obviously with this one, you're gonna wanna pick it up at discounters. And I do feel like overall, Y Le Parfum, for me anyway, is a better fragrance than Y Elixir. It's quite similar to Y Eau de Parfum, which is extremely popular, but this one is a little more mature, a little more grown up, less in your face with the sweetness. Is it devoid of sweetness? Absolutely not. It's still there. It's still a big compliment puller. It's just a little bit more buttoned up. You have apple in here, aldehydes, uh, ginger and grapefruit off the top, makes for a really enticing opening. Good freshness there initially as you spray it on as well. The aldehydes obviously helping out with that. You have some aromatics as it dries, sage and lavender. You have tonka in the base, giving you nice sweetness that lasts throughout the life of the fragrance from the opening into the dry down and a touch of woodiness in there as well. Really good performance, lasts a long time, projects pretty well also. It's a big compliment puller. Gonna be better for spring, fall and winter. Maybe it leans a little bit more toward evening use, but obviously you can pull it off during the day as well. It is, at the end of the day, a Y fragrance. Let's go expensive with Tom Ford Grey Vetiver Parfum. Now I will say that if you want an easier to wear version of this, 
I get the Oda Parfum. The Oda Parfum is easier to pull off than this version. The Eau de Parfum is gonna be fresher, brighter, cleaner. This one has more of an earthy touch to it. The Vetiver is a little darker, more of a rooty kind of feel to it. Quite woody, but it has that, yeah, that dark edge that the Eau de Parfum does not have. It lasts quite a long time. The quality is there. It's almost like you take some of the more masculine, edgier parts of uh, Guerlain Vetiver and then blend that in with Grey Vetiver Eau de Parfum. So this is gonna be more for people that do enjoy Vetiver that already know they like it. If you don't, then again, to reiterate over and over, the other version is gonna be a better fit for you. But if you already know you like Vetiver, you can rock with this one. And it does come across, I guess you would say a little bit more mysterious than the other version. Uh, though the other version is safer for the office. This one would be better for an evening occasion. After that, Gentleman Eau de Toilette tints a little bit similar to Dior Homme O, which is unfortunately discontinued, has been discontinued for a while. This is gonna give you a blue iris, which really you could just think of like that. It's an iris forward fragrance, but it has a little more versatility along the lines of what you would expect from a blue fragrance. Yeah, just think of it like that. Tonka in the base, cardamom off the top, some basil off the top as well. So a little green, spicy, fresh, very clean. You also have cypress in there and cedar. So additional woody notes that kind of crop out and prop up the other notes in the fragrance as it dries down. A tinge of sweetness, not too much, just enough that balances everything out. The green aspects, the aromatic aspects, the iris, the, um, the sweetness, all very well done here. So gentlemen, Eau de Toilette Intense, this one is a great everyday wear fragrance that really utilizes that iris in a way that even people who maybe shy away from that can wrap their head around. Let's go niche again. Oud Ver Intense from Fragrance Dubois. Now this is a pricey, pricey scent. It is not cheap. How pricey you might ask? Well, with no discounts, you buy that at full MSRP. Uh, most places you look, it's gonna be $410 US. That's for a 50 mil size. Uh, you can get a 100 mil, it'll be more. How much more, you might ask? <clears throat> $695. So it is pricey. It is very pricey. You can find it sometimes for less at different discounters or maybe find a discount code to be used online. But if we're talking just straight up MSRP, that's what you're looking at. Now that said, the quality here is obvious. When you spray it on, it's extremely elegant. The way that it hits your nose is just very smooth. I've talked about this in a couple of videos in the past, but this fragrance has a certain feel when you smell it. It's, it's very light in a way. So the way that it hits your nose, it doesn't feel like you're getting walloped and yet it has good performance. So it's one of those deals where when you smell it, yes, it's very expensive, but you would never confuse this with something that is $50. Not that the scent itself is insanely crazy complex the way that it comes across, but it is very, very, very pleasing. So it's uh, another one that's quite green with the fresh and slightly warm spiciness when it first hits your nose, cardamom in there, ginger, a little citrus. You also have coriander and nutmeg as well as it dries down. So a good amount of spices there, good spicy blend. And then you have woodiness uh, that's prominent as soon as you spray it on through the mid into the dry down. Even though oud is in the name, uh, it's not really that much of an oud fragrance. More so it's green, fresh, spicy, woody, but not anything you know, animalic, funky, fecal, uh, nothing like that. It's actually really smooth. Uh, speaking of oud, here's another one. This is Versace Oud Noir, personal designer favorite of mine if we're talking designer ouds. So this is a really nice introduction to oud because it's not overly funky or anything like that. Like I just mentioned with this one, there's no animalic feel in this one. Oud Noir actually has a little more though of uh, a medicinal feel from the oud than the Fragrance Dubois does. Now, I'm not saying the Fragrance Dubois has no oud in it. I'm just saying the way that it comes across is not what most people would associate with oud. 
This one has a nice spiciness to it. It has saffron in there, it has pepper. The oud, as I said, a touch medicinal, a nice dark woodiness. You have a nice fragrant cardamom that comes out from this one as well. Extremely appealing, very pleasing. The performance is good. Presentation is very nice. It's about 65 bucks, so it's a great bang for your buck. And some people find it a little similar to Tom Ford Oud Wood at certain points in the fragrance's lifespan. So you may be able to use this as a sort of um, itch scratcher. <laughs> like if you want something a little in the style of Oud Wood, but you don't have Oud Wood or you don't want to use it, this can get you something pretty similar. Last but not least, Ferragamo Intense Leather. Love the presentation style on these uh, new Ferragamos with like the little faux leather that goes all the way up the bottle and up the cap. It looks really nice. This one has apple, mandarin, iris, some earthy notes in there, and leather, of course, since the name is Intense Leather after all. Another one that's very, very, very versatile. This stuff, year round, daytime, nighttime, doesn't matter. Another one that has a nice crisp sweetness off the top with that red apple. Technically it's a mid note, but you can pick it up pretty much right away, melding with the iris and the mandarin orange. You also have clary sage in there off the top, helps plug in some of the gaps, gives it a little aromatic touch around the edges. Really, really pleasant stuff that honestly not many people are wearing. The only drawback for me with this one is it's not regularly in stock at discounters. Well, it is, but in a one ounce bottle size, which most people probably don't want. This size, 100 mils, is uh, often sold out. But when it is in stock at a good price, it's a great pickup. So there we go, guys. Those are my choices. Thank you for hanging with me. Uh, stay safe out there, and I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. I'll see you guys later.